Hey, you've tuned into T.C. McCarthy, the most handsome and exciting science fiction author on video. Before we get going, I just want to explain a little thing that I keep getting questions about, and that is, T.C., why should we buy your book when it's not available until July of 2019? I have a good explanation for that, and it, it goes something like this. If you're not in the industry, you probably don't know this, but basically pre-order sales help a lot with getting authors onto bestsellers lists, like the New York Times bestseller list, the USA Today bestseller list, you know, you get the picture. So basically what happens is with every pre-order that an author gets, it gets stacked up and saved. And then all of those pre-orders get counted on the first week of, uh, of book sales that, that come out when the book gets actually released officially. So I'm asking you to buy my books early for a reason. And I, if, look, if you, don't like, if you don't like my books, don't buy it. That's fine. But if, uh, if you enjoyed the last series of books I did and you know who I am, and you, or if, you, if you're interested because of these videos, please buy it early. Even though it's not available yet, it'll help me get on the bestsellers list. So that's it. Quick explanation. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. And I have this really bad habit of leaning over like this. You'll see me like this in some of my videos. It's because my microphone is right down here and instinctively I feel like I have to get right up close to it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and teach myself in the future not to do that. All right, so heads up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mispronounce this name throughout the video and I apologize for that in advance. Those of you who are expert astronomers can correct me in the comments. We're going to talk about something called Boote's Void, which is a very weird and strange section of our universe. And the next time you're out there looking up at the sky and you see the Big Dipper, do me a favor. Kind of trace, I think, I think this is the way to find it, trace along the handle of the Big Dipper until you get to the very end, the fainter stars, and then next to that somewhere will be a constellation called Boötes. In between those two points, I hope I'm describing this correctly, is a dark region of space that looks like there's nothing in there, and that's because really there isn't. Now, technically, there are a few galaxies in there. I think as of today making this video, astronomers have discovered 60. Uh, but it is a very strange portion of space that spans, I think, about 250 to 330 million light years. And it was discovered, I believe, in 1981. When it was first discovered, they only found about six, seven, or eight galaxies. But since then, we found more and more. And I think now we're up to 60. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what do you, TC, look, there, you, you just said it was empty. You, now we're finding out there are 60 galaxies in there. What's the problem? Well, the problem is this. There are a couple of issues that, that scientists are kind of scratching their heads at and wondering, what the heck is going on here? The first, there should be many more than 60. If you take a section of our, of our universe and, and look across it, you know, 350 million light years across, you're going to find anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 galaxies on average. So it's a very sparse region of the universe when it comes to galactic filling. The second thing is scientists have, have said, well, you know, maybe this is just part of the normal universal expansion. Our universe is expanding, and, and although we'd like to think everything is evenly distributed, that's not the case. Uh, sometimes you find clusters that are more filled with stuff, and in other cases you find areas that are less filled. However, a region this big is unusual and statistically unlikely, and so what scientists, I think, are starting to scratch their heads about is it's too soon for, for something, a region this big to have formed. And that has generated alternate hypotheses, uh, hypotheses along the lines of, okay, well, maybe several small areas, you know, glommed together like water droplets, you know, grabbing onto each other and forming one big droplet. You get the picture. Or soap bubbles, I think, is one of the more common um, analogies. So they're thinking, okay, yes, it's too soon for something this big, but maybe there are mechanisms that made it happen. But that explanation doesn't really sit well with some astronomers, and I don't necessarily buy it because what we're talking about is a, a void at a size of 350 million uh, light years and a roughly spherical shape, which is strange. We're talking about something that takes up 0.3% of the known universe. That's big. That is tremendous. But I think more recently, scientists are, have kind of stumbled into another, another potential explanation, and that is, you know, something to do with dark energy. Now, I'm not going to go into the specifics of dark energy. I'm not a physicist. I don't understand it, so I won't even try to explain it. But it's this thing that basically has some sort of gravitational influence within the universe, how the universe sticks together, how fast it expands, that sort of thing. Scientists are now looking at Boote's void in the context of dark energy to think that maybe there's some explanation or insight to be gained there. Because when you actually look at the center of Boote's void, and this is another strange thing about it, there are galaxies, like I said, 60, but they're not evenly dispersed. What happens is you look at the galaxies and they are basically in a tubular shape inside the void. So they're arranged in something roughly equivalent to a tube or a cylinder. Now that's bizarre. 
Those are the scientific explanations. Of course, there's one that's more exotic that involves UFOs and aliens, and of course I'm going to cover it, so here we go. Back in the 60s, a scientist called Kardashev uh, came up with this thought experiment to, to, to consider the possibility of alien races, and he assigned them three different levels of technological advancement. The first level is a race that is able to harness on its planet all the energy coming from its home star. The second is a Type 2 civilization, where there's an alien race that can harness not just the energy falling on its planet from its home star, but all the energy of its home star. So anything going off in any direction, they're getting it, they're using it. And then there's the last Type 3 civilization, which you can see the progression, is basically a civilization that can harness the energy on a galactic scale. So a civilization that can go and basically get energy from stars all around it, in its galaxy, all the way up to galactic scale. Humans, where do we fall? Well, it sounds to me like we're somewhere below level one, type one. Uh, we can get some of the energy coming off our sun and harness it on the ground, but not all of it. So we're probably, what, like zero, uh, point one, something like that? I don't know. Then moving on from those definitions, this guy Freeman Dyson came up with the concept of, okay, well, if, if Kardashev is correct, then we have to imagine some civilization that can build something that they called a Dyson sphere after Freeman. And the Dyson Sphere is a, a structure that can be built around a star that enables a civilization to capture all the sunlight coming from that star. Now, you may see where I'm going with this. People who, who consider this stuff seriously, and it's not just UFO enthusiasts, it's, it's some scientists are actually considering these types of things. The question arises, is that an explanation potentially for Boody's Void? Are we looking at an alien civilization that has somehow harnessed the energy from all the stars in that area? And it's expanding. That area is expanding, by the way. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the starlight cut off because these, these alien races are harnessing all the energy and it never, it never leaves. We never see it. And so what we see instead is a big dark space in, in the sky. That, to me, that's pretty creepy. It's not the, it's not the explanation I think is, is uh, valid. I think it's probably related to the dark energy studies they're doing right now. But the fact of the matter that, that you know, that's a potential explanation is pretty spooky. And of course, I'm going to tell you about it. I love that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching this episode. Go ahead and take a look at Boody's Void and on, Google it and take a look at what other people think. It, it is a pretty interesting subject and is very creepy if you start looking at the, the more exotic explanations. And the next time you're Googling that stuff, take the time to buy my books. I'm going to keep plugging it. Sorry, whether you like it or not. And transmission. Hey, TC McCarthy here, the most eclectic and entertained science fiction author on YouTube, maybe even the internet. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. As usual, buy my books. I've got a new one coming out in July, and uh, I'll have a giveaway coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Appreciate you subscribing to my channel, and please, 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 please don't forget to click that little bell icon so that whenever I upload new content, you get notified. Thanks again. See you soon.